In today's video, we're going to be having a look at one of my favourite budget robot vacuums. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. A massive thank you to Bagger for sending me the BG800 Max, which is actually the robot that we're going to be looking at today. A few years ago, I actually started my venture into using robot vacuums, and I actually started out with one of Bagot's models, which happened to actually be the BG800, which is the standard model. So the one that we're looking at today is actually an upgraded version of the one that I looked at, which offers a few extra niceties, and it actually sells for the same price that I originally bought that older one at. And I know what you're probably thinking. You're probably thinking, Mark, who the heck are Bagot? I've never heard of them. Well, the reason you actually haven't heard of them is because they're such a small company and one of the things that they do in order to keep their smaller products cheaper is they make use of cloud providers and cloud services like Tuya and they embed those into their products. So the majority of Bagot's products are all cloud-based. So if a cloud-based budget robot isn't something that you're interested in, then you're not going to be interested in this robot. Since testing out my first ever robot vacuum, I've tested out a whole magnitude of other robots that have all got fancy and crazy features. So it's going to be interesting to actually see what features you actually get with a budget robot and whether it's actually worthwhile picking up a budget robot or whether you should just save a bit more and actually purchase one of the more high-end premium models. Now obviously the robot that we're going to be looking at is a budget robot so there are going to be features and bits of hardware that you're just not going to be able to get for this price point. So let's run through now and see what you get for this price point and have a look if it's actually worth it. The BG800 Max retails for around £240, but I often see this thing up for sale or the heavily discounted. And at the time of actually recording this video, you can actually pick it up for around £180 over at Amazon. And if you are interested in checking this thing out, I'll leave links to it in the description below. Inside of the box, you'll obviously find the main BG800 Max unit itself. You'll also find a set of instructions and a warranty card, an 800 milliliter water tank, which is used for mopping. Now, interestingly with this robot, you actually get two different tanks. So you get the dustbin tank and you also get the water tank. So the water tank is obviously used for mopping and the dustbin one is used for actually collecting all the bits of dust and dirt that the robot sucks up. So you can't actually mop and sweep at the same time. These things need to be done separately. And if you've watched any of my other robot vacuum videos, then you'll know that I personally hate these kind of mops where it's just a kind of little fabric cloth that just gets dragged around the floor. So this isn't really something that I'd use and having them separate is a bit of an annoyance because you have to find somewhere to actually store this thing when you're not using it. If you're in the market for a robot vacuum and you see the robots offering features like this mop in and it actually uses one of these mops where it's just that cloth that gets dragged around, then I would just say avoid it because it's just like an add-on and it doesn't mop very well so I wouldn't actually recommend it or say it's worthwhile. Inside the box you're also going to get a small black docking station that the robot will just sit on to charge and this docking station features some little rubber feet to help it stop sliding around on the floor. What's nice about this thing is it is very small and it takes a very minimum space. You're also going to get a spare filter and two sets of magnetic tape and obviously because we're using a budget robot, you're going to get that magnetic tape just because it's not going to be able to do any kind of no-go zones or virtual boundaries. You can set these magnetic strips up on the floor to actually mark out areas that you don't want the robot to go over or to box off areas that the robot shouldn't be able to enter. And I showed these things to my wife and she hated them because originally in my old house, I actually used to put these bits of tape around the dog's food because the robot would always try and jump up into the dog's food and it would just make a mess. As well as the magnetic tape, you're also going to get a spare cleaning cloth, a power plug for whichever region you're in, three additional sweeping brushes, and a cleaning comb. The robot sports a very low profile design, and its overall footprint is very small. The design for this thing is very minimalistic. It's basically just a small circle, and the top of it's got a kind of circular ringed theme going on. On the top of the device, you'll find three buttons, one button is the power button, which can be used to start and stop the robot and also power the device on and off. Then just above that, there's a button to send the robot home and a button to enter the spot cleaning mode. Spot cleaning is one of the robot's four main cleaning modes. In spot cleaning mode, the robot basically does a small circle around a set area that it's currently at and it will gradually do a bigger circle around this spot until that one individual spot is cleaned. 
The other three cleaning modes that the robot has is smart cleaning, edge cleaning and manual cleaning. With manual cleaning, you're able to use the robot's app to actually drive the robot vacuum around and it will just clean as you move it around. With smart cleaning, the robot will kind of do this zigzag type pattern where it will just bounce around in a zigzag pattern until that set area is actually cleaned and it will use its internal map to actually know where it has and hasn't cleaned. And the final mode, edge cleaning, the robot will use its map to actually just go around the perimeter of a map and it will just clean around the edges. So if you want the edges to be cleaned, you could use edge cleaning. You may have noticed with the robot's whole minimalist design, it's very flat, there's no turret set on the top of it. So we haven't got any LiDAR laser beam shooting out of it and there's no crazy sensors or additional bits of hardware to help it perform any sensing like cameras or obstacle detectors. So this thing just basically uses a minimal set of sensors to help it navigate around. And one of the main things it does is it uses that front bumper to actually detect if it's touching something. And if it's touching it, it just moves away. So it's very bare bones and basic, but it does get the job done. On the bottom of the robot, you'll find a singular sweeping brush and also that singular roller brush. And this is just used to actually suck up and collect the dust. On the bottom of the robot, you'll also find a couple of anti-fall sensors. And these are obviously used to help the robot stop falling down some stairs or falling off of a drop that's too big. So if these sensors do kick in, the robot will stop in place and it will just send you an alert to tell you it's gonna fall. Suction wise, this robot features 3000 PA of suction power, which is actually a whole 800 more than the original model that I previously tested out. The robot features a 3200 milliamp hour battery, which Bagger estimate as 150 minutes of cleaning time. Now, they don't specify which mode that the robot's in to achieve this cleaning time, and I haven't actually been able to test out how long it will last because usually it takes about half an hour to clean my house, and once this robot's done its thing, it will just go back to the dock. If you're after a bit more detail on the technical specifications for this robot, I'd definitely recommend checking out Bagot's Amazon listing for it because that seems to be the most up to date. On Bagot's own website, there are a few spelling mistakes, typos, and they also list some features that don't actually exist within this robot, such as HD sound and deep bass and all day playing and fast charge. And Bagot, if you are happening to watch this, you might want to check your website. With the app control, this thing is set up using the two-year service. So that's one way that they've saved some money here because it uses the standard two-year model app kit. So if Bagger actually have their own app, which is basically a two-year modeled app. So you could download the Bagger app and use that to actually set the robot up. Or if you're already making use of two-year or smart life, you can just add that robot straight into this. Using the Bagger version, you don't actually gain any extra features. You're just separating your whole app ecosystem a little bit more. So if you're making use of those apps, I would just highly recommend sticking to one of those. Adding the robot to the Smart Life app is a quick and simple process. You just need to put the robot into its pairing mode and then you just follow the on-screen instructions and it will get you set up and paired. Once you've got the robot in the Smart Life app, you can start making use of all the different cleaning modes and you can start making use of other features that you'd expect from a robot vacuum, like being able to manually control it, being able to return it to the dock, and also being able to set up a schedule and view information about the peripherals of the robot. This is where the robot runs into some of its limitations. Because it's only making use of a very basic set of sensors, it doesn't have those additional properties like being able to set up no-go zones or being able to actually map rooms. With the robot's mapping, it gives you a very flat 2D image of where it's cleaned, and this actual map is regenerated each time the robot runs. So you can't actually save a map, and there's no way to tell the robot to go to a set zone. It basically just shows you where it's cleaned. So as a quick glance, you can actually see where the robot is and where it's cleaned, and that's basically it. There's also no history for the robot. So if you look at the previous map, you can see when it last went out and how much it cleaned and where it cleaned, but you can't see a history of previous cleans or what times the robot went out and what time it came back. There's just no kind of login for this thing. Being able to view the history is something that I would expect to see even from a budget robot. So I don't know if Bagot can actually add this or implement to this using two years service, but it is something that I would expect to see. Using the app, you're able to tell the robot to go and start its cleaning in its automated mode or any of the other cleaning modes. You're also able to set the suction power and the water level of the robot. So if you want it to either automatically adjust based on the material that the robot's currently on, 
or if you want the robot to output a lot of water or just a little bit of water, you can adjust these all in the robot settings. For the majority of my testing for this robot, I've pretty much used it in its maximum power mode just to get the best out of that 3000 PA suction. And for me, this robot's up against a Husky, so it's gonna need all the help it can get. I've been very impressed with the pickup power of this robot and I've been impressed with how much dirt and dust it's actually able to pick up and how much it's actually able to compress into its little dustbin. The robot's able to transverse over hardwood floors and carpets and from carpets up onto a rug without any issues. It's got quite good suspension in its little wheels and again it's just been able to climb over these things without any problems. Because the robot's only got some basic sensors, in the obstacle tests that I've done, obviously it can't see things that are in front of it, so it won't try and dodge them or avoid them. So if you've got any cables or loose bits of clothing or toys or other bits all over the floor, then it will either just bash into them and move them out of the way, or it will just try and eat them. If you're looking to add this thing into your existing smart home platforms, then you can do so. If you're making use of the Smart Life app to actually pull your robot in, then you'll already have control over it using the cloud. So you can use the Smart Life app, or if you wanted to, you can set it up in either Amazon Echo or Google Home by using the relevant skills. Setting it up in these services gives you full access to the robot, and you can then use those systems to actually set up and control routines for the robot if you don't want to make use of the standard app. And what about Home Assistant? Well, with Home Assistant, you've got a couple of options here. You can make use of the standard two-year app and then you can just control the robot using the cloud and Home Assistant can then provide you with all of the history and controlling of the robot. And if you don't want to use the cloud, you can make use of something like Local Two-Year or Two-Year Local and use that to actually control the robot itself. There's no form of local control available for this robot and as it's using the two-year platform, you're locked into using that as a service. Now, interestingly enough, with the previous robot that I tested out, it actually had a remote control that used IR and you could use that IR control to actually drive the robot around or start and stop its cleaning modes or set its mode. With the dock that actually comes with this robot, there is a space on the dock for a remote. So I do wonder if this robot does have IR capabilities and it's just not listed or whether they just make use of the same dock in order to save a bit of costs with actual manufacturing processes. As I no longer have that remote or that robot, I'm not able to test that remote to see if it would actually work with this one or test out some kind of IR blaster to check to see if it would work. But it would be interesting if you could do that because that will give you a bit of local control with the robot. Another way that you could gain full local control of this thing is just by setting it to whatever mode, probably just the automatic mode, and maybe using some kind of button pressing robot like the finger bot or the switch bot and just have that set on the top of the robot and press the button. Because this robot is a budget robot, it isn't as smart as some of the more expensive robots, but that is a bit of a gift and a curse. It's a curse because it doesn't have good obstacle avoidance and good collision detection, and it also doesn't have some of the extra nice features like self-emptying, a bigger dock, and lots of other nice features that you get with more premium robots. But the good thing about it, with it being a bit dumber, is you don't have to worry about a lot of the things that those other robots have to do. So when you tell it to go out, it won't do any check-in, it will just go out and clean. And if you wanted to do multi-floor mapping, then you just take it upstairs and it will go and clean upstairs and then go back to where it is. Because it doesn't care about its map, it will map the area that it's doing for that area. So it wants to know where it's clean for that set clean routine. And once it's done with it, it doesn't care. Let's wrap this up then. Overall, I think that this robot, as a budget robot, is very good. I think you're getting a good value for your money. And if you can pick this thing up for around £150, then you're definitely getting a solid deal. I'd recommend this robot to anybody that doesn't have a big smart home or doesn't want local control. With this robot, it's more about outweighing what features you want and what features you need and whether it's something that would actually be appropriate for your home. For me, for example, I'd want local control and I'd want a bit more features and functionality like better obstacle detection and I want those crazy cameras and other features just to be able to avoid toys, cables and other bits that might just be out on the floor. With this robot, without those things, if they're there, it will just bash into them or it will try and suck them up and nine times out of ten, it will either move out of the way or it will just get stuck on whatever it is. I think if Bagot ditched to you and just locked in with something local, maybe something like Apple Home, then I think this would probably make the robot become a lot more appealing and more popular 
especially to the IoT community that just wants something cheap and wants something that works locally. But there we go guys, that's been a quick look at the BG800 Max. Let me know in the comments below if there's a robot that you know of that features maybe some more advanced sensors and maybe even local control and I'd definitely be interested in checking it out and seeing how well it works, especially as a budget robot. And while you're down there writing your little comments, if you enjoyed the video then don't forget to drop me a like and if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell, you'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons, and if you're interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find a link to my Patreon in the description below. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.